I can just speak to me, but I think I owe Brady an apology because I don't think I gave him enough credit or I should have given him even more credit because what Brady allowed Coach Belichick to do, Brady is the largest eraser in pro sports because every mistake that Coach Belichick made during that two decades, Brady could erase it. You took a bad receiver, Brady would take a seventh round receiver, a receiver that you took in the first or the second or third round, and Brady would erase it with a Julian Edelman. Or you make a mistake on a defensive back, he would take somebody else and he could erase it. Coach Belichick did a great job of designing defensive schemes to keep the point, what he did against the greatest show on turf. All these great high-flying uh, high offenses. But at the end of the day, when you needed a quarterback to make a play, Brady always made that play. So I think he allowed Brady to play away because he could tell Brady, when you see this formation, this is what I would do to you if you're in this formation. And this is where the weakness is in the defense. But I don't think he – a regular coach can't have this level of success for two decades. But what it does go to show you, no matter how great of a defensive mind or an offensive mind you are, if you don't have a guy that's six foot four and 200 plus pounds with arm, you're whistling in the wind. I would never sit up there and say that Bill Belichick is just another coach. But I can't say his record says so. <laughs> I can't say that his record without Tom Brady as his quarterback average, in 10 seasons average. is 79, 72 rather, and 79 with two playoff appearances. Wait, that's his record without, without Tom as Tom a starting Brady. quarterback? Without Tom Brady in 10 plus seasons as a head coach, Bill Belichick's record without Tom Brady is 72. In 79, I'm looking at it right here, with two playoff appearances and one single playoff victory. That is without the services of Tom Brady. It has to be said, so I'm going to say it. If I'm Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, I call Bill Belichick, the six-time champion, this man that built my organization into a perennial champion, who recognized the fact that Drew Brees wasn't the answer, it was Tom Brady, okay? This guy, I call him into my office, Shannon. I call him into my office, D.O., and here's what I tell him. You are no longer the GM, the football decision maker for this franchise. You can coach, but that's it. You're not deciding personnel any longer. And if Bill Belichick did not accept that, this would be Bill Belichick's last season in New England. And I'm going to tell you why. You pushed Tom Brady out. He wasn't ready to leave. He showed you that when he went to Tampa. He did not want to leave. You pushed him out. Not only did you push him out and convince me to do it against my will, and I fought you a few times and saved Tom Brady when you wanted Jimmy Garoppolo to be the successor, but then ultimately I caved and I gave in to you. But not only did you do that, but then when we got Mac Jones, what did you turn around and do? You brought in Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. You literally totally impeded agree. this brother's progress. Yep. You're not making football decisions anymore on personnel matters. Yeah. You will coach. And if you don't coach, and that's not enough for you, we're going to celebrate you and the great work that you've done, but this would be your last year as New England's head coach. Yeah, we're, we're in the time right now watching them ruin and break Mac Jones. Mac yeah. Jones is a significantly better player than what we are watching take place right now in New England. No one blocks, no one gets open, no one makes a play. It's awful. This is the worst roster they've had in 20 years, worst team they've had in 20 years. Stephen A., I would agree. The conversation that you thought would never happen in New England has to be on Robert Kraft's mind right now. Uh, am I actually going to do something at the head coaching position when it comes to Bill Belichick? It has to at least be a conversation with the way this team has looked the last two years. Yeah. New England looks so much closer to the Caleb Williams, Drake May sweepstakes, the two quarterbacks that will be the number one and number two pick out of college football, than it looks like a playoff football team right now. To your point with the general manager and stuff, the last time that they drafted a really good player on offense, not like great, but really good. Now, Ramondre Stevenson is, is bordering that world right now, is realistically 2014 in James White. 2014, they drafted hey guys, Tooney. And, I got to hit the top of the hour. You finish your thought. Tooney and Shaq Mason are good offense line. Tuma's not there. Mason's not there. But skill position-wise, 2000. Since, that, since 2013, I'm sorry, from 2000 to 2012, 
Belichick drafted 10 players who went on to earn all pro selections as Patriot Shannon or Richard Seymour, Vince hey, Wolfe, Asante Samuel, those brothers. Since then, dating back to 2013, fellas, 10 years. Belichick has only drafted two players, two, who went on to earn all pro selections as Patriots. Guess what? One was a punter. The other was a punt returner. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? In 10 years, <sighs> you, Bill Belichick, have drafted two players. You heard that? Two players who were so all pro good. selections. A punter and a punt returner. And nothing else. I'm sorry. If I'm Robert Kraft and I hear that, I hear Stephen A. just echo that stat, I'm like, yo, man. Enough's yeah. enough. No doubt. You're not going to be making yeah. personnel pro, decisions anymore. Pro sports, pro sports isn't like college sports. Coach K had a lifetime contract. Coach Smith had a lifetime contract. Pat Summit had a lifetime contract. That's college. In pro sports, no matter how successful you are, yeah. you got to update that resume. You don't get a lifetime contract, even with the level of success that Coach Belichick has, has had. You hear my back crack? I, I was hoping it was your back. I feel so much better. You have no idea. Yeah. I'm in alignment. You could just crack your back like that? Amer yeah. America. Yeah. America. And I have the chiropractor. You, Stephen A. This, and I Stephen A., that's what we turn into. Come. An orthopedic show, Stephen A. Is, is, is what, that's what, what, what we turn yeah. into. That's what we turn into. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you okay. know how good do you feel when you get a job? You, you have someone come to your house? Yeah, he's actually the Jets guy. But you constantly complain. First of all, you don't need to be telling your business like that. Oh my about that. You don't need to say who. That's number one. And number Dr. two. Schneider. Number two, you don't need to be crying about money and all of that other Talk stuff. Talk about people coming bragging to your house with crack wealth. Back. Yeah, yeah. You, I, you heard that. I know that too, Stephen A. What are you talking about? No one, you don't have a chiropractor to get aligned? Let's, let's, no. let's, Adjusted? Let's, will let's we go. get focused? Okay.